greetings everyone. My name is Jean-Pierre Kikens from the uh, information portal covexit.com and today we are very pleased uh, to welcome um, as a guest uh, for this interview Dr. Varon. Uh, Dr. Varon is a professor of acute and continuing care at the University of Texas Health Science Center and he's the Chief of Staff and Chief of Critical Care at the United Memorial Medical Center in Houston, Texas. Professor Varon, welcome. Thank you. So we are extremely pleased to welcome uh, Professor Varon and the whole concept of this interview is to go through two areas. One is the stages of the disease COVID-19 and the second is going to go into some depth into some of the key issues associated with the disease. So uh, the first part of the interview will uh, cover prophylaxis, uh, mildly symptomatic patients and then more advanced stages of the disease and uh, you can see right away uh, what are the areas we are going to cover uh, in the second part. We'll get into the details later. So let's jump immediately to the stages of the disease. Professor Varon, can you comment on those, please? Yes, I mean, when you look at, at any disease, and this is not just uh, particularly to COVID, especially when we're dealing with an infectious disease such as COVID, in which you have in a part where the virus first infects your body, and then a second part where the virus has kind of triggered a series of reactions in your body that really get you sick. You can talk about a first incubation phase, which is the part where the, you, know, you got a contagion from somebody, the, the virus is slowly getting into your uh, cells, especially into the lung cells, then you start having a second phase, which is a phase where you start having symptoms. And the symptoms may vary. I mean, we have now been learning a lot of new symptoms coming from COVID. After you start having these early symptoms, you have what we know as the early pulmonary phase. Uh, the early pulmonary phase is when you start having a little bit of shortness of breath, it's a little bit of a cough, you start having evidence of pneumonia on your chest X-rays or CAT scans. And then you have what we know as the late pulmonary phase. And during the late pulmonary phase, that's when you are really sick. And that's when people may die. And can you explain the, 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 the transition from this uh, viral uh, infection towards uh, inflammatory response? <clears throat> yes, I can. Uh, first of all, you need to understand that COVID or coronavirus infection is a very fluid illness. It's an illness that keeps on changing and we keep on learning things. The way I approach my patients today is completely different than what I used to do eight weeks ago. We have learned a lot of new information. Initially, we used to think that there was an incubation process of about four to five days, but we actually have seen patients that have taken much longer than that. Then you have a, an inflammatory response that in many patients starts at the very beginning. You know, once you start having that incubation, once the virus gets attached to you, you start having a process of inflammation. But the process of inflammation really is not going to start peaking until the second uh, week or so. And between the 11th and 14th day, that's when you start getting a peak. And then when you start getting in trouble is when your body has generated so much inflammation that your lungs are so inflamed that you basically cannot breathe. Simultaneously, while you are having that, Many other organs are being affected. You start cloning all over the place. You start having micro clots that affect eventually will affect organs like the heart, the kidneys, the brain, things like that. And just to, to be precise, when you say that this inflammatory phase starts uh, around the second week, it's the second week after the first symptoms? It's, it's that's a, no, that's the second week after you get the infection. However, okay. having said that, we have like, a, and, and that's why I want to be very clear with the people that are watching this. That happens in a lot of people, but more and more we're learning that some of these uh, symptoms, or some of these <clears throat> severe inflammations, can occur weeks later. Not necessarily at the very beginning, like our graphs have shown. 
<coughs> okay. And and the key symptoms from your perspectives are, are, are which one? <laughs> I would tell you, you know, over the last uh, 65 days, I have seen every possible symptom known to back pain. I have seen people that present with headaches. I have seen people that present with, you know, lack of smell, lack of taste. I have had people that present with a classic fever, dry cough, chills. Those were used to be called the, the classic ones. But I have seen people that come to me because they have a rash or they have a belly pain. Actually, one of the first patients that went admitted to the hospital had severe belly pain, abdominal pain. We actually thought that he maybe had an appendix or some some issue like that. And uh, we just didn't think about uh, COVID presenting like that. We're seeing a lot of diarrhea. Indeed, there are a few uh, uh, studies that have shown that if you were to look for the COVID uh, virus in the stool of patients, you can see it three days before you start having the other symptoms, even if you don't have diarrhea. So that's the, 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 the problem of this illness. And that's why it is extremely important that we do testing, testing, and retesting. Because the fact that you're negative one time doesn't mean you're going to be negative the next time. And so your advice is to come as early as possible once you have some symptoms that you suspect any. I would say that, you know, the moment you have something that is not your usual, you know, I mean, if you're a person that gets headaches all the time, that you have chronic migraines, I mean, I wouldn't concern about that. But if you have any symptom that you have not had before, doesn't matter what it is, I think you need to seek medical advice. 